You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Then after you show yourself, the guy switches from you and shows, he starts speaking to another person. That's when you declare your eyes what you did. <laughs> that is your last month you gave. The trust was fair. Amen, somebody. If you want to grow, be in prison in this church. <laughs> this is the church. <laughs> this is the church. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Prayer. Worship. You worship God. He releases His glory. He releases His power. You pray. He now releases His help. When you worship, He releases His glory. He releases His almightiness. He releases His sovereignty. Everything about His kingship just comes to bear on your situation. When you pray, you now assess His help. You assess His, His, you know, His mercy. You assess His intervention. Oh. No wonder Jesus finally favored that woman. Broke protocols for her. Number three. Release your faith. You see those two scriptures, you will see that these two verses release their faith. That woman said to Jesus, even dogs, even dogs, she released her faith. She released her faith. And when your circumstance meets your faith, it bows. The circumstance does not argue with faith. Once God also meets your faith, He releases. He doesn't withhold anything from a man who has released his faith. God releases your breakthrough when you release your faith. God releases your answers when you release your faith. God releases your miracles when you release your faith. When you withhold your faith, God is incapacitated. When you withhold your faith, God is limited. The way God expresses himself is when you express your faith. Your, your faith is what moves God. That's what the Bible said that the just shall live by his faith. He said without faith is impossible. He said for he that cometh to the Father must know that he is and is a reward of those that diligently seek him. Without faith is impossible. You can't please him. Is this situation defiling your life? You must learn to exercise faith over that situation. It's just something that looks impossible. You must learn to open your mouth and confess. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You must learn to open your mouth and speak to that mountain and say, Oh, ye mountain, be thou removed from here. And they cast. Faith is a language. Of victorious men. For we know that in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through Christ that loved us. You see, your, the boundary of your harvest with God is your faith. Anything you are not able to get, check, you have not first gotten it through exercising your faith. God is not limited. Our faithlessness is what makes him look limited. Faith is like a basket. You only contain as much as it can exercise. That thing that you, that small, that's your small level you're struggling with, is not God giving you deep. That's your inability to do big things for God. And it's not God giving you again. Each morning I wake up, one of the first things I say to myself is, I know by faith I will go to the ends of the world. I know by faith this mandate will spread across the globe. It's faith. Every one of you here has a form of faith, but you don't know. You're sitting where you sit now by faith. When you came to church this morning, you just came in and you just sat down. What if there are no legs there? You didn't ask, you didn't check if this chair is okay. You sat by faith and it's been carrying you. 
you open this bottle of water to drink. Some of you sometimes don't check. You just open. What is this acid? Service finishes now. You are going out of church. You open this door and walk out by faith. What if there's an armed robber standing here with a gun to kill you? You came to church this morning, believing you're coming to come and receive God's word. What if there's a suicide bomber here now? Why did you consider all that before coming here? You came by faith. Knowing that when you are done with the service, you are going back home. You entered a keke man. Why didn't you check the expired tire? The tire is expired. But most of them you enter as expired tires. Why did you check if the keke man is a kidnapper? Sometimes how do you even know? They don't write it on their face. But you entered and said, I'm going to create the aristocrat hotel. And you believe that's where you're going to. What if, it's a, what if the man is carrying you and going where you don't know? And you begin to say, help, help, help. Help, oh, help, oh. If they carry me, no, I, if they carry me, go, I don't know. Then you begin to play, carry me, they go. They come and carry me, they go, where I don't know, no. The issue is, you operate by faith on a daily basis, yet you don't know. You wore your shoe this morning. Before you wore it, please, did you re- remove the shoe and look inside? And be sure this shoe is in order. How come you just put your leg confidently? What if there's a snake hiding inside? What if there's a scorpion hiding inside? You just wore it. You finish eating. You finish cooking food. Dish it out of the pot. Put it in the plate. Just sometimes you even leave the plate open and go to your room. Pick something. Come back and carry on. What if alligator or ngwerengoro? What if ngwerengoro? Has found his way and then hide inside the plate. Yet you were eating in confidence. You've been practicing faith. You just didn't know his faith. If you can practice faith at that level, you can practice faith for the impossible. You can get things that men say it's not possible. Hey, somebody hear what I'm saying? It's time to get into your destiny. It's time to exercise dominion. It's time to become what God says you can become. The currency of the believer is not naira or dollars. It's faith. Faith is a universal currency. He said, for by it, the men of old, <laughs> they obtained a good report. They, for by it, those men of old, the police call, the road wonders, the short amount of lions. Hear this. You don't have two heads that you have. The difference between them and you is that they exercise their own. You are withholding your own from being exercised. You are afraid. Something is crippling you. You don't believe you can do it. That church, you feel you cannot practice. You can't pastor. It's faithlessness that is destroying you. That church you think you cannot grow. It's faithlessness. That city you think you cannot bring to our news. It's faithlessness that is keeping you here. When I post like this, it's to be sure it's digested. It's to be sure I've not lost you. One minute and I'm gone. Practice fit. Release your faith. Concerning all God's promises for your life, they all come to pass by faith. There's nothing God promised you that will come to pass on its own. Everything God says is received by faith. You're going to be a billionaire. Amen. No, that's not how you receive it. You convert prophecy to reality by faith. The currency that converts the things spoken of you in the word of God and spoken of you through prophetic word into reality. The currency that converts it is faith. I give you an example. If you want to drive a car now, it's simple. You need currency. Eh? Hello, somebody. You need currency. Let's say you want to drive a Range Rover Sport. You go to the market. You desire to buy the car. The driver tells you this car can be your own. 
the car seller. He said it can be yours. Because any car you see on a car stand for sale can belong to anybody, including you. Because it's for sale. Nobody's name is written on it. You can own it. But now you need something to convert it to your ownership. The reason that car is displayed there is so anybody who has currency can have it. So that car is good as your car already. But it's not yours. What you need now is to deploy the currency of Naira. Maybe the car sells for 14 million. Deploy the currency and then you retrieve the thing. It now becomes your property. They write the receipt in your name and all that. That's how everything Jesus died for are all yours. But the ownership of those things to convert all that Jesus has made available for you into practical ownership, what you need now is to deploy faith. That's why even salvation is received on the premises of faith. Jesus died for the whole world, but the whole world is not yet saved. Everybody in the world doesn't have salvation. The ones who have salvation are the ones who accept the finished work of Jesus by faith. How do you retrieve salvation? It's by faith through believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. And then start living the life. You're a born again man. Then the same thing applies to healing, breakthrough, finance, and all that. Every promise of God is like goose Jesus talked in the warehouse. And he said, they are all yours. You can have them. The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, all his promises are issued for you to have. His blood makes everything you ever need available. But your faith will make them accessible. His death, his burial, his resurrection makes everything you need in this life available. Toyota car has made cars available, but your currency makes them accessible. So Jesus has made everything available. In case you're wondering why you're not getting them, no. That is available doesn't mean he can eat, it's yours yet. It's available doesn't mean you can, it's like if you're sick now. Drugs are available, don't you know? I'm a headache, malaria, typhoid, fever. I don't know how I'm feeling. Hey, you can stay here, say, I don't know how I'm feeling, and die. There's drug in Octopia. There's drug in Robust. There's drug in FMC. There's drug in Feta. There's drug in UNTH. There's drug everywhere. Well, now, how do you get that treatment administered to you? It's leaving that spot where you are complaining. I'm sick, I'm that. And then go to the pharmacy and then get the availability. Access what has been made available and appropriate it on your life, on that area that is affected, and then you are healed. Well, if you say your house and you're complaining, though they have manufactured drugs for you, you can still die of that sickness. So Jesus died for you. Died for your wealth. See, the Bible says, for, for your wealth, he became poor. So that through his poverty, you might become rich. He bore our grief. He bore our infirmity. He bore our sorrows. The chastisement of our peace was upon him that by his stripes you were healed. You can still die a sick man. You can still die a poor man. You can see that he's sorrowful man. You can see that out of depression. Yet he doesn't want anybody to die that way. The reason people go that way is because they are faithless in receiving the things that Jesus already made available. Are you knocking on a door and that door has refused to open? Don't exit, knock harder. The person inside might be sleeping. He needs to wake up. You can't come here Sunday after Sunday and hear the kind of bombs you hear here and go home and be the same. I don't know what you're looking for again. You have rich food here. One thing about this church is that God has blessed this church with so much wisdom and revelation and knowledge in every area of life. Every area. 
every Blessed be the Lord God of our Father and Savior Jesus, who has blessed us. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place. That scripture is real here. Every spiritual blessing is here. I see no reason why you should be where you are, hearing the kind of things you hear. Your faith is a currency that now converts everything in the warehouse into your storehouse. Your faith is a currency that turns everything into from the warehouse into your storehouse. They will all be in the warehouse if you don't deploy your faith. <laughs> they will all be in the warehouse if you don't deploy your faith. Your faith is a currency that turns or converts everything out of the warehouse into your storehouse. Yeah. The next point. Oh, I can talk on faith. I can talk on faith. I can talk on faith. Practice humility. Hmm. You see it in that woman's life. It's humility. They insult her. She's, she's, she doesn't go challenging the man. She see humility. You see it in Zacchaeus' life. That man who is a revenue officer. Federal Land Revenue Service. F-I-R-S-C. F-I-R-S. Rich man. Still he can come down and go and climb a tree. Who does that? Imagine a governor climbing a tree to see a pastor. Oh, the CBN governor, for instance. Imagine that I'm going to Abuja now, and CBN governor has a coming there. And he leaves office and starts running. And they climb the tree just to look at me. <laughs> As a powerful man economically. That's what Zacchaeus did. And that was humility in action. When they called down my dog, he sounded insulted. But her response, even dogs, she accepted it. Even dogs, it, it doesn't mean you are timid. It doesn't mean you don't know who you are. No. Sometimes to get what you want, act like you don't know who you are. Number five points. <laughs> Most people are where they are because they always know who they are. I know who I am. Nobody can talk to me like that. Nobody can abuse me. Ah, okay, who is that man? Even my father has not said that kind of thing to me. And he said, I know who I am. Yet you see, I'm still where you are. I know who I am. You're still at the spot where you are. Don't you see that you have a problem? Sometimes behave like you don't know who you are. So you can get what you want. There's some things people say to you. Don't just respond. Behave like you don't know who you are. So you can get what you want sometimes. Hmm. If you try to show power all the time, expose yourself. I'm a powerful man. I'm proud. You know who I am. I must be on the spotlight. I must show myself. If you always do that, you create resistance from everybody around you. <laughs> you see how sometimes your politicians are white. Yesterday we had a program when it came in. You know, his aides came and met me. And said, sir, he's around. I don't know if they, you know, because nobody here is qualified to come and receive him officially. Can you help us do that? I could sit down there and say, uh, yeah, him just come in there. But I could just say, Pastor Sam, go and bring him. Well, first I watched the humility of that guy. He knelt down. So I watched it. I said, okay, I'll come. I stood up. That's breaking protocol. I won't do it. I won't do it. But, okay. Let me go. So I went, and then he comes down on the car, and we hug. And he said, I'm so happy to be here, man of God. Thank you for this opportunity. I said, wow. I said, I was expecting for a level. No, no. He said, no. I had to come early. So we can also set the example for people. He said, the way you talk. And that's how we went. Yesterday when we finished everything with all the stress, I had other places to go to. I finished my meeting, got back home. I was just in train inside my office. And then he called me. Just to say thank you. I kept saying thank you and thank you. And we're talking and all that. I said, you see, they know what they're looking for. But they know that there are scripts they must play to get it. Some of them get it too. When they get to the office, it's how misbehaving. 
But you know, before they get there, there, there are things you must do. There are people you must lie down for. I can't lie down for anybody. Sometimes just lie, just lie. My pastor is just a human being. It's only God I lie down for. No, sometimes for that God to answer your prayer, I lie down for that pastor. Because even Hannah was crying to God every day, open the windows, rain down somewhere. God said, you're joking. You see the man I put over you, honor that man. Just lie for him and I will open windows for you. Until Hannah recognizes and then recognizes the place of Eli. Just one word from a drunken man. From a man who was drunk with wine. Is a bead unto you according to your faith. At that same year, that same, the next year of that same whatever time, she bought a son. Humility makes you admirable. Humility makes you lovable. Humility, humility makes you accessible. Humility makes things assess you. That's what I'm saying. It makes you assess things with me. You see, even when I finished my meeting yesterday, I had to take the guests who were around. I took them out. There was one who was insisting on going for something somewhere, graduation. I allowed him away. Even after he went, I, why went? I still called him again. You remember when I called one? I called him. I said, "Where are you? Can you just come and have this stuff?" With he said, "Pastor, I told you not to bother now. Don't bother." He said, "I'm bothered." He said, "It's not in my culture." Sometimes, even when the person is insisting, he doesn't want. Just if technically insisting that you want him to want. Uh-huh. Even if you had your prayer, Lord, let him not say yes. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> you don't like wisdom, I just noticed. <laughs> Am I making sense to you? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you offer somebody food, he didn't eat. You know it's the only food in the house. Go back to the kitchen, eat your food very well, enjoy yourself. Thank God he didn't eat it. Go you see him tomorrow, tell him, that food he didn't eat is spending meal. That food he didn't eat is spending <laughs> Oh. If you want to succeed in this world and after this world, be in this church. You see what I said? There are some things you only hear from me when I'm on the altar talking. Sometimes when I'm with you personally, you don't hear from me again. You know why? Because of the way you relate with me on a personal level. I see, I'm not, so on the altar, I just release things. But even what I'm releasing is the shadow of it, shadow. What we hear real deep things. That time you catch me alone. Huh? Finally. Okay, second to the last. Practice gratitude. It's also one of the attitudes of practice gratitude. Be thankful. Yes, I know I'm going now, for instance, something need to change. After the meeting yesterday, she ran to me. When she came with her bag behind, I don't know who she was carrying inside, whether it's Annabelle or who she was carrying, with the bag inside, just carried her cup. And I asked her, which one did you come to do? Did you come to thank me for this mighty meeting I've just done? Or did you come to collect the change that is remaining from your banners? He said, it's a cold one. I came to collect the money. He said, now I know you're a confused person. He just left her there and walked away. Even after the service, if she comes around me, if she doesn't come to greet me and go home, I will chase her. Don't care what your husband thinks. Because even when somebody is owing you some change, attitude is important. Do you know people who have, so people who they owe are smart. There's some people who you owe them some money, you see them, they start charging. Uh-huh. Okay, here come. That's my money. I put in here and there. Most of them, they owe them for life. The money we elongate. What's that one that is that that you are owing? And a policeman call you. Hello, sir. I just say, let me know how you are doing. Hope you are fine. You heap coal of fire. 
I hope you're fine, sir. I just wanted to know how you're doing. You know, I just said, let me greet you, sir. The man will be the one say, you see that money? Oh, you have not forgotten, no. I have not forgotten. It's just that I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten. And he said, I know, sir. You know, it's just that business. We just need money to put in business and do some things. If you can help us, we'll really be happy. Even if it's not us, I'm just part of it. We we'll appreciate that guy with you. Even if it's his last, he will go and borrow to pay somebody's way. Because yes, I don't want to abuse this kind of regard. I don't want to abuse this kind of respect this guy has given me. See the way this lady respects me even in debt. Well, that's for even people who have sense. But now you go and approach. Hey, hey, so I want to hear him that morning now. You won't pass this road. Hi, tabota. The man will charge. Do your worst. And you notice you use that character or whatever and elongate that depth. He won't care again. Because you took something that you should have protected, helped him protect. His ego, his pride, he took it away. Even in the issue of debt management, there are principles that govern it. Yeah. Some of you, they are owing. That's some of the way you can go about it. There's a time to charge. Gratitude. So pick on the small things that people do that others will not even appreciate. Appreciate it. I am able to talk about goodness the way I am talking to the person right now. I am not going her. She is not going me. And decide not to give her that money again. Now she wants to cry. Today that we wore uniform, Norisha is where we are going to. And I am happy your children are now here. It gives us time. Amen. And finally, let me say this before I say finally. When people do things for you, find opportunity to appreciate it. Your life will move forward. Don't be the kind of person who forgets easily what people do for you. Forgetfulness is a syndrome. If you forget easily what somebody do for you or what people do for you, it means you are not ready to go far. There's a blessing for remembering that when I was sick, this man took care of me. When I was broke, this man paid my transport. When I was, you know, when you, when you remember what people do for you, even when it's something old. Ah, I don't know how it happens, but this is way gratitude makes men feel. And it's way gratitude opens your heaven. I don't know how it happens. But what? Appreciate even a little child now for something. That magic affects that child. Just appreciate a little baby now for something. You see the baby wants to do more. So I, I see even my daughter does it. She gives me water. I thank you, thank you, my love, thank you, oh my God, you know that is just, this is why you've opened it, that, that, because you say thank you, that, how many of you are witnesses, that, 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 she will be picking me one after the other, if it finishes, papi, 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 that's Pastor G, she will remove her shoe, Dad, Papi, Papi, why? Dad, because she's hearing thank you. She wants to do more. She wants to show more love. She wants to show more gratitude. She, because you keep being grateful. She wants to do more for you. Mm-hmm. Even children understand that language. How much more leaders, adults, or people who do something nice for you? Somebody pray for you, you get a miracle. Ah, thank you, sir. That prayer. You know, when we give testimonies in church, testimony is an act of gratitude. You're not just sharing it to tell me what God did for you. You're sharing it to return glory to God. Some of you, God, 
do, do mighty things in your life, saves you, delivered you. You can never give a testimony. And ingratitude is the greatest stock in trade. It's everywhere. Everywhere. Especially with the young people of this generation. One of my friends that would just say, this generation, huh? I can't pass them. See, you, the people who are pastoring them, you are trying. I said, why do you say that? So they are selfish. They are ungrateful. They don't remember what you did for them. They are this. He said, I said, well, that's the nature with young people naturally. I know it's worse with this age. But still, something can be done about it. I said, the kids, we use teaching. Let's teach, let's teach. Let's teach them and see. Some of them are operating in ignorance. I think if they know better, they will do better. That's for gratitude. And finally, sacrifice. So you see that Zacchaeus man, did you see that sacrifice made Jesus stay in his house? And not that Jesus stayed in his house. Okay, the tree climbing, which is a sign of humility, right, made Jesus visit his house. Jesus stayed in his house, okay? But when Zacchaeus now offered a sacrifice, what happened? Jesus instituted salvation in that house. So there are things humility will do. There are things gratitude will do. There are other things that sacrifice will do. And this sacrifice can start as little gifts. Okay, for instance, yesterday we did something. We said, let us just destroy something and see how people behave towards meetings like this. Not a big deal. So I, I, I asked the statistics team, what do you get? You guys want to do registration, uh, you know, on the text registration. I said, what do you want it to look like? I said, okay, let working class people do 1,000. I said, okay. I said, well, students do 500. I said, if you like, do working class 200. Do students 15, are no problem. Or 20, are no problem. I said, but observe what you will see. So they are the one that set the benchmark. I said, fine, I'm good. So I came yesterday. And I went to the text. And I said, I heard you guys are registering. Who is the person doing the registration? Says, I pulled down money from my pocket. Counted 5,000. And I gave them the 5,000. I said, that's my registration fee. Where's my tag? They gave me tag. I'm the convener of the program. I'm the host of the program. I'm the main guy in the program. I register with 5K. You're doing 1,000. I said, watch and see. You will see how people value these things. I paid 5K there. Say, am I lying? I paid 5K. Collected my tag. Walked into the home. Sat I said, let me tell you why. I was talking to him. I said, let me tell you why I do what I do. I said, it has become a culture in me that even when I attend a program that is free, I don't rate the program that is free based on the fact that you make it free. Nothing is free. Anything you are getting free, somebody paid heavily for it. Somebody paid the price. So what I do is even if you put some things for free, I know I want to be blessed. And I want to rate myself a man of value. So what I do is I don't go collect things free, collect free books, collect free food, free coke, free knowledge, and just go away. It will never benefit you. The sign that you're growing is that your character is changing. The sign that you're growing is that your attitude is changing. The things you place value on is changing. You know a man who is growing when he values knowledge and he values food. Like the guy who is complaining about food on the WhatsApp group yesterday, that's how to tell that he's a baby. He's not going anywhere until he changes that thing. He didn't say anything about the explosive knowledge that was coming there. It was food he was speaking on. He's not going far. He's not going far. Then some might be angry. After working for money tonight, they didn't give it, the food didn't get to me. Ah, that's a baby. So the other one you've been eating, the knowledge explosion and all that you've been eating is not food. Buy the truth and sell it not. The Bible says you should even buy truth. So you get knowledge for free. You still don't appreciate it. And even scripture say buy it and don't sell it. That means don't trade it commonly. That the knowledge, this is God's knowledge, should be bought with money. You should buy it with, not with money. And don't trade it. That's what it means. Don't commonize it. Sell it here doesn't mean it means don't commonize it, don't trade it for cheap. But can't you see the wealth stored in one man here? 
It's what I place value on. So I travel to Lagos. Even if the program is free, I you will be sometimes the only one. I go to the research. How much is this program? It's free. I said, no, it can't be free. It can't be free. I remember one program they did somewhere. They didn't go. Free certificate. Even when they didn't impress you. Free certificate. Still, people will not be grateful. Is it your right? I did a program in prison, printed certificates of competence, and gave people free of charge. Even people who didn't come, they're coming back to church and gave the Kalem our certificate. And you see them harassing people. So some people came there, they have their 1,000 plus. Some have the, you see those ones who went and registered? They are the ones that have orientation and value. Those are the ones you look for. That's the ones you can train. The ones who saw, they are giving money there. You buy pass and enter free down. Nothing is wrong with you. How many of you are registered? You registered. You registered. How much did you register? You gave them money. And you collected it. Hey, hey. That's somebody who tells you, I want to be mentored. You now know, okay, he understands the value of it. Let's see if we can help him. Let me see and help you a little. Others will dodge it. Don't care about it. Even if you didn't have the cash here, you collect the account number. Even if I, even if I don't have it, but it's 1,000 compared to this meet. The 1,000 doesn't mean we are making money. How do you make money? You went that year with 100,000. But that 1,000 you'll pay. Hey, if you project the account number now, those who didn't register should collect the account number and can put it. You see some people will not do it. It doesn't matter to them whether they can about They will just still, if you project it, they will still do it. Just look at it that so when you pick up their phone and pretend they are this one. Nothing happened. He did nothing. See, I'm a city boy. I've been here. You can't fool me. Ah! No, I act like I don't know anything sometimes. But the team plenty says. You see them doing over seriousness. Just finish, check the accounts. Nothing entered. Just mark him. Score him one place. Just leave him there. Oh, you even projected it finally. Oh, okay. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.